All right, guys, welcome back to Home Built. And after a month away, a very long month away in the US, uh, I am refreshed and back, uh, raring to go to get this car finished up. And uh, hopefully in this episode, if everything goes well, we will get it moving under its own power. Yeah. All right, guys, welcome back. And uh, like I mentioned, I've been away for almost, or uh, well, actually over a month now, and um, it was fantastic. I got to see a whole bunch of different parts of the US, sort of did a bit of time in California and did Rensport Reunion. If you missed it, I'll put a link up here so you can check that out. Uh, fantastic event, absolutely worth uh, uh, having a look at. And, uh, and then we, Mrs. Jeff and myself, actually rented a car in Nashville and did a road trip sort of uh, across the coast to Charleston and went sort of down Savannah and uh, worked our way down to Miami before flying back over to LA and then uh, coming home. So great trip, great time away, but uh, it's definitely got me uh, raring to go. Every time I take uh, any time off, uh, I very soon get itching to get back in the garage again and start doing some more work on my projects. So uh, it is time to get stuck back into the Alpha. It's uh, it's it's very close, and there's there's not a whole bunch left, hopefully, to get the car rolling and driving. So uh, let's stop messing around. I'm going to get the car up in the air, and uh, we'll start tackling the first thing, which is attaching the tail shaft, and uh, and then we can start filling the gearbox. Typical, try and get straight into it, and I've spent the last hour trying to sort out the nuts and bolts just to connect the tail shaft up to the diff. The issue I have is that I actually taped the bolts into the tail shaft so that I have the bolts. These are the correct bolts, and there's no slop in them, and this, uh, this join is completely taken up by the, uh, the bolts. So I don't want to have two smaller bolts in there I don't want two bigger bolts in there. The trouble is, is that after a lot of measuring, a lot of messing around, these are M9 bolts. Now, anyone who plays around with nuts and bolts will know that M8 is very common, M10 is very common, M9 is not common. These are not imperial, they're actually metric. I double check with a thread pitch gauge and all this stuff. These are M9 by 1.25 bolts. And uh, yeah, I lost the nuts. So uh, now I've got to try and, I've got, I found one, I have one M9 nut. So I'm gonna have to order something to, uh, uh, finish this up, which is really, really annoying. Um, such an odd size, because I have a whole collection of new hardware that uh, does not include M9. I need to find myself another oil transfer pump for the gearbox, because this is the second type I've used, and they are both horrible, so any suggestions are welcome. Okay, so I started filling up through the fill plug in the gearbox and the oil started coming out, uh, it's basically full, but coming out of these, uh, there's a hole here and a hole here on the gearbox. And uh, I never noticed them before, but the oil is leaking out of there like crazy. And it makes me question this gearbox. It was cheap secondhand on Gumtree, so it looks like it's missing a couple of bolts. I'm gonna put a couple of bolts with some um, new crush washers on there, but um, we'll see. And uh, yeah, I don't imagine there is a reason why those bolts should be missing. So this gearbox, maybe the gearbox is toast, but uh, it's done me well to get it to this stage. So I can't really complain. It was very, very cheap. All right, so uh, I've got to do some more searching, but it seems like M9 bolts are very difficult to find. 
I didn't really want to drill it out to fit an M10 and M8's a bit loose. So I just quickly got on the lathe and turned up some dowels that I can fit in. So I've got some dowels to sort of take up some of the space and then I can use some M8, M8 hardware. So that will uh, at least get me going for the time being. Okay, so now that the tail shaft is bolted up with the dowels in there, I'm much happier that that is uh, going to be strong enough, at least until I can get myself some more of the correct bolts. The next thing I'm gonna tackle is the fuel tank breather. Uh, some of you might've noticed when I had the exhaust on previously that the mufflers sit very close to it and it's really not a good spot for uh, um, fuel vapors to be coming out. So uh, I'm actually gonna take it off of here and put it through so it's sitting on this side of this center um, sort of separating bar and uh, and then I'm gonna make myself a heat shield to cover all of this stuff up to protect it from uh, the exhaust so let's do that All right, so the tank breather is now moved. It's over the other side. That is much, much safer. So the next thing you need to do is start building a heat shield to cover all this stuff up. All right, well, that was a, a lot of time spent cutting and tweaking, making up my cardboard template for the heat shield. Now, I'm not worrying about covering everything totally. It's just um, uh, just blocking the direct heat to the, uh, uh, the bits that uh, I'm concerned about. I am going to be making it out of aluminium. Now, it's not the greatest thing to make heat shields out of because it transfers heat quite well, but it's still gonna give that um, give a barrier between the two and uh, I'm gonna put some tape, uh, heat reflective tape on the inside. It would be better on the outside, but it may peel off being on the underside of the car, so I'm gonna put it on the inside. So let's start cutting it out. So I transfer my template onto the aluminium sheet and then just start cutting it out with the angle grinder. Cutting out the inner curves is a little bit more difficult. Uh, using a drill to get a nice round end is the way to go. Here I just drilled out the hole and then cleaned it all up with a air saw in the end. So I've gone around and tidied up all the edges and then a little bit of work on the brake and I've got it folded up into the rough shape. And just using a few salt tapping screws to start with, which will probably end up staying there for quite some time, but I can replace them with a bit of hardware later. And instead of welding, I just decided to drill and rivet on the extra pieces to sort of make a nice, neat box. All right, a bit of CAD, a bit of cutting and folding, a little bit of uh, riveting for a couple of extra panels. And I have my heat shield. Now, like I mentioned, it is aluminium. It's not the best heat shield, but it's still giving me separation, um, which should be enough. So uh, yeah, this goes on nice and neatly into place. Ouch, that's my finger. So now I'm just gonna give it a quick and nasty coat of paint and uh, we'll call that done.
Okay, so the next thing I need to do is something that I have been putting off because I am worried it's gonna be a pain, and that is filling the car with coolant. I don't know if I'm gonna have any leaks, and um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get in and I'm going to use my vacuum bleeder to pull a vacuum in the whole system. That should initially tell me whether there's any leaks, and uh, then we can fill it up with coolant and hopefully she'll be pretty much ready to run. As I feared, it is leaking somewhere. It's not a big leak, it's, but it is definitely leaking. So I think the only way to go forward is to actually try and fill it and uh, see where it physically leaks from and then I can fix it. Because at this stage with no fluid in it, I'm sort of chasing my tail. Well, I always get really nervous at this stage, even though I've started the car several times now, I'm still nervous every single time. Um, I've got the electronic water pump controller and fan controller um, sort of taped up over here. So uh, for those who didn't follow the build, basically I have a Link ECU to make things simpler. I've got a Davies Craig water pump. It was easier to just separate that out with the amount of inputs and outputs I've got spare on the ECU. So that is controlling it. Normally it's mounted up under the dash, though at the moment I've just got it taped up. Uh, I've got the laptop set up. That's set up so it has all of the telemetry of what's going on with the car. And then uh, we have my gauges here. This is just my uh, oil level gauge and my oil pressure gauge. They're also connected up, ready to go. So make sure we're in neutral and uh, start it up. And we're gonna test a few things now. We're gonna see if we can set up the cooling system, see if we can see where this leak is, if there is a leak. It could have actually just been leaking from my tester unit, so I, I don't know. I'm probably not that lucky. <laughs> uh, and um, yeah, we'll try and set everything up and just see how it goes. So uh, let's give it a go. So good. That's sounding so much better now. Uh, sound good. Something doesn't sound good there. All right, that's enough. We're smoking a lot. All right, so the engine was running. The gearbox does not sound good. I think we've found our coolant leak. Well, first things first, I found my initial leak. There it is there, and if I follow it up, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, it's running down that hose and it's actually coming off up the top in the middle there. That is where the uh, water temperature sensor is in a, uh, in a fitting and it's leaking from that fitting. So that is a relatively simple fix. Okay, so like I mentioned, I found the coolant leak and it looks like I found the horrible noise in my gearbox. If I actually turn the tail shaft, 
basically I just need to clearance this housing just a little bit to uh, uh, give a little bit more space for the, the tail shaft and that should be all right. I didn't get around to trimming all of it so it still needs a little bit more attention later. All right, so I've fixed a few things. I've gone over and um, we're going to try starting it again and uh, just see how it goes this time. I have now got the exhaust valves open before they were closed, so uh, it's probably gonna be a little bit louder this time, but um, we're just gonna see if we can run it for a little bit and just see what happens. All right, alternator's working. Wow, that is loud. Um, <laughs> there was uh, definitely, with the exhaust valves open, it is very, very, very noisy. There is more stuff to have a look at, but we have an alternator that's running now. We have the uh, electric water pump system that seems to be working the way it's supposed to. There's a bunch of things that are starting to actually work the way they're supposed to. Still haven't checked to see if there's any more leaks. Let's just have a look at that. Mm, so far, so good. There's no drips. We might have done it. Yeah, there are lots of things that are definitely not perfect on this at the moment, but the only way I'm going to discover those things is to start actually using it, running it, and uh, that means that I need to actually uh, start putting some things back together and at least see if it'll move. See if it'll move on its own, if I can actually sort of reverse it out of the garage, and uh, who knows, let's just give it a go. All right, we've got it all together enough that uh, I'm going to take it at least for a try and move it up and down the driveway. I'm not going far. I'm just trying to get the car to move under its own power and just see how it feels. At the moment, there's still a lot left to do, but um, this is a very, very big moment in the car. Oh, it feels like a car. It's running. reverse it's working oh that crotch smell oh New clutch. It's moving under its own power. Oh, that drive shaft sounds horrible. Brakes are working. They're soft and spongy. I have to bleed them again, but we have brakes. We have movement. We have a moving car. Water temp is still looking good. Um, we have an alternator that's charging now. Oil pressure's good. Yeah, oil level is good in the tank. Everything is, everything is working as it's supposed to at this stage. At the moment, it's working.
Oh yeah, I'm definitely going to have to do something about that. Now, we're not going to get out of the driveway. I'm calling that a win. I can't get out of the driveway. It's doing burnouts in the gravel, but uh, it's a win. Yes! Oh, this smells hot. I'm going to turn it off. Oh, well, well it's dusty and smoky and um, it moves. It's doing its first burnouts in dirt, but uh, it's still a burnout in my book. Uh, I can't get out of my driveway. Not that it's registered anyway. Uh, I just wanted to just sort of see how it goes and it moves. The gearbox is working. There is that uh, cover that is uh, rubbing. I'm wondering whether my tail shaft is too long. I'm not sure whether that's gonna be an issue. There is actually quite a bit of flex in the center joint. It's got a CV joint in the center that's got a lot of movement in it. So I don't see that there's an issue there. It's just, yeah, it, it moves. It's working. It's a car. Oh, but it's working, it's a car, it moves. You saw it, I saw it, yes. <laughs> oh, it's been a long time coming, but we have brakes, we have clutch, we have accelerator, we have gearbox that uh, seems to work and uh, engages. It, um, it seems to be traveling at a reasonable rate for the, uh, the gearbox, so the gearing seems to be pretty good, at least at low speed. Uh, like I mentioned a long ago when I actually put that gearbox in, I worked out the gearing and it should be pretty much right. I think uh, the theoretical max at, um, at Redline in top gear, it should be doing about 310 kilometers an hour. Obviously, I'm never gonna be doing that, but um, it's, uh, I think it's, the gearing is just right. It's a car. It's working as a car. It's, the, the smells are starting to die down a bit. Obviously, it's been heated up a couple of times now. That initial startup always stinks like crazy. And uh, I'm getting a little less stressed every time I start it. Now it seems to start all the time. I have to check and see if it's still leaking. I don't think it's leaking. I think I've got my leaks fixed. I've got most of my initial issues fixed. So now I can sort of get onto the cosmetics about just finishing things up, making things right, putting the exhaust pipe in the right spot so that it's not dangling down a horrible location and finishing the interior. Yes! Yes, it's done. All right, well, hopefully you enjoyed that. And uh, I think that definitely means it's long overdue for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, Ferrari built a few one-offs and concepts based on the 458 Italia platform. One of which was the Pininfarina Sergio, dedicated to the former chairman of the company. The concept was an open top car with no windscreen and headrests attached to the roll bar as opposed to the seats. In the front door panels, two helmets are stowed in storage lockers and the car is designed for aerodynamic efficiency and is 10% lighter than the car in which it's based on. Ferrari then went on to build six units of the Sergio, although the production cars had windscreens and headrests attached to the seats. These were of course only sold to hand-picked Ferrari customers. Another one of Ferrari, based on the 458, was the SP12 EC, EC, as it was built for Eric Clapton. The English musician is a Ferrari enthusiast, with his favourite model being the 512 BB, of which he has owned three. This heavily inspired the SP12 EC, which was designed by the Ferrari Styling Centre, along with Pen and Farina, for a reported cost of £10 million. Alright guys, well welcome to another episode of Mail Time, and this week I have a package from Amazon, and um, opening it up, all I got in there was a message 
from Tyler and saying, hi Jeff, long time subscriber, thanks for all the entertainment, hope these might be useful from Tyler. And uh, in the package, what he sent me are a bunch of these uh, vehicle service books and uh, log books for, for cars, which is actually really handy for something like the Alferrari, which doesn't actually have any service books or anything like that. This sort of thing will, uh, will be very, very useful. So thank you very much, Tyler. And if you guys have got anything you want to send through to us, stickers for the tool cabinet or anything in, or like that, just send them through to Home Built by Jeff, PO Box 1520, Barrel, New South Wales, 2576, Australia. Ah, oh, and I'm a bit slow, I just clicked. Um, he did the yellow one with the Italian flag for the Al Ferrari and the, uh, the orange one with the purple stripes for Harry. So uh, thank you, Tyler, I did get it. <laughs> I'm a bit slow, but I got it. All right, and the Al Ferrari is driving. It's moving under its own steam. Uh, speaking of steam, there is still some coolant leaks. I had another go at it uh, uh, since that last video and I've sort of nipped up a couple of hose clamps and stuff and I think I've got a handle on it, but we have to run it again to sort of see how it goes. It's sitting too low. I need to raise it up a little bit. I need to fix a bunch of things, but it is, all in the right, going in the right direction. And now it is full steam ahead in getting the things done on it to get it registered. So that means things like getting all the lights working, um, making sure it doesn't overheat, get a uh, get it booked in to get a tune, get um, the suspension sorted out, and just uh, a bunch of those little bits and pieces, gauges, just so that it can actually uh, be a real car. Yeah, exciting it's, times ahead. It's close, it's so close. <laughs> Yay. Like, this is great. Let Jeff know what you think. It was really good comments, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. See Bye. ya. Hey, guys, Ferrari built a few one offs and spin offs. No, concepts. I think I've lost my muscle memory. Hey, guys, Ferrari built a few one offs and concepts based on the. Oh my god. It's working!